lady of the house just recently passed. And so the house, you know, went up for sale. So the only way to get rid of her ghost was to gut it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, could could be. (laughs) I got Um, you. Look at that. Mm. Yeah. This is for Chad mm. if he watches us on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, there it is, Chad. Nespresso going. Oh, man. It's so good. Mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for home brewed coffee, that is uh, coming out of a pod. Yeah, Nothing else nice. compares to the Nespresso. I'm going to just say that right so. now. Well, with fighting words, but. Yeah, no, I don't I think you're right. <laughs> to the pod, you know, like in the pod realm. Yeah, right, to the pod world. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and if for anybody, people have asked me about the coffee, by the way. Yeah. Over on the DMs. Yeah. And so like to try to head that off, if somebody's wondering, we use, both Andy and I both have, um, they're called the Nespresso Virtuo, right? Virtuo? Yeah. Virtual. And they're these like bigger pods that are not the little tiny Nespresso ones. Yeah. That doesn't they're help tasty. if you're listening audio. If you're watching YouTube uh, version of this podcast, you can see me hold up the pod. But anyway, Nespresso. Chad loves it when we talk about our coffee machines because like yeah. his oldest son gets all, you should buy one of those Nespresso machines and he gets all bent out of shape. It's kind of fun. <laughs> anyway, enough about that. <laughs> Love getting them going. Um, yep. Andy, you had a story. You were I do me. have a story. I stopped you mid-story. I don't even want to hear the rest of it until we hit record. Yeah. So we we're st- we started uh, one of our new construction projects or our remodel, big remodel projects that we talked about a few weeks ago that we don't do right. Like <laughs> we don't do. We don't do new construction. It's not yeah. not the kind of work that we do. And well, anyways, to be fair, it sounds like it is a remodel job. It 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 hundred percent is a remodel. It's an um, existing house or gut. They gutted it. Yeah, right? hundred and twelve year old house type thing. So old house, um, super cool place. Uh, kind of in the university area. Nice and uh, small. Right, like I mean, big footprint of the house, but small in terms of plumbing. So it's a kitchen and a bath and a half. Nice, right? Yeah. Like, you know, there's Good a future deal. bath in the basement that we're going to plumb, but we're not there yet. It's not a big thing, but it there was a lot of demo to do. There's a lot of buried galvanized piping, and all of that's got to go. And uh, that's what I was going to ask: Are they gutting the piping too? Like, are you starting yes. from where it's stubbed yeah. into the house, or what? Yeah, basically we've got a, well, what I understand to be a 112-year-old galvanized water line coming in through the wall. Um, it's crazy the, you guys the have shut off valve. water lines. Yeah. The shut-off valve, shut right off. Boop. Really? Almost drip tight. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's nice. <getting> crazy. <laughs> so that's crazy. Yeah, I'm I just a had box a of those brass gate valve that wouldn't shut for the, the other day, and it's probably 20 years old. Right, right. So, so I was like, I wonder if we could get a, order a box of those valves. Those are pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. No, you can't. <laughs> well, first of all, you'll never get them on the pipe. So, <laughs> right, right. Okay, so, so you're repiping anyway, completely. It's a gut job on this house. Uh, gut job. Hundred, yep. you know, ninety year old plumbing is going. Yeah. What is the waste? The waste is galvanized too. No waste was four inch cast iron. Okay. Heavy so, uh, service weight, port, just uh, hub and yeah, spigot. Port, yeah, bell and spigot, yeah. And so the the excavation contractor here a month and a half ago, when I first looked at the job, had was running a new line up and into the garage. And so this the sewer line goes into this, like, earth and berm garage. It's, like, built, this house is, like, built on the hillside. Okay. So the garage is under the yard, Right, like there's dirt over it. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird. Probably wet all the time. Yeah, super dank, damp. Anyway, so they had uh, saw cut the floor into the garage area, and that's where we're going to pick up. Basically, they got to uh, we're going to put a clean out in there. That'll be our house clean out. That'd be front um, main. Yep. And so we'll take off from there and bring four inch into the house, and then as soon as we get inside the foundation, we'll drop to three inch. Do you, we I was going to say, do you need four inch? Can it no. just be three inch? Yeah, yeah. We just got to be inside the foundation 
before we can drop to three inch. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure the lo- logics behind that code, but like our water lines I think now, it, even, sorry, even if we need three quarter, we have to have one inch coming in. I think it has to do with, um, future. So like, I think so. if you had three inch out, then yeah. technically because of sizing, the code would say it would not approve for an additional yeah. bathroom. Yeah. That's my take on it. As you I, know, too, I th- I'm not telling you I think that. you're you right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so re gut. So you're, you're coming in from the new garage stuff, the sewer coming into the garage now. Is that like opposite? It doesn't matter anyway, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you're, kind of opposite sides of the basement. Um, there's probably, I don't know, 65 feet or so, 70 feet of saw cut that we're going to need to cut across the basement and then to a floor drain to the mechanical room and to this future bathroom. It's a it sounds bit like a large cut. house, but you said it's only one and a half bath. It's it's it is. It's a big house. Um I think it's what one, two, three, four, five bedrooms. And they're one, and a, half one and a half bath? Well that's what's in the existing upstairs. So it's gutted, but existing walls are staying, if that makes sense. Like wall finishes are coming off. Yuck. They're a future bathroom that's probably going to happen next summer once they finish upstairs in the basement. Well, let me ask you this. If you're looking yeah. for a house to buy, and let's say this house is in your price range, okay? Let's just assume all the good things about it. Yep. And and you get down further on the listing while you're looking at it on your phone while you're sitting there drinking your morning coffee on the pot. Yeah. And you see that it has a one and a half bath, but it's a five bedroom house and it's, you know, Yep. 3,200 square feet or something. Yep. You're going to you're gonna bite on that, right? Because it's one and a half bath. That's all you need. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm scrolling. I, I'm like, whoa, um, I wonder where we can put the third bath or, yeah, the the real second bath. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. I, I thought the same thing because right now, I mean, like I say, we got it gutted. There's a carpenter there or a whole crew of carpenters. I mean, they build them all the custom cabinets. This is not a, this isn't your, isn't this isn't a, a cheap typical. Flip cheap no this is not a budget flip no um ultimately it's not even an expensive flip if they're gutting it it's going to be highly very expensive no i'm saying like it's not even just a flip you know what i mean yeah right no no no. simply because they're gutting it yeah okay so okay i keep interrupting this that's all right i would i would guess that this house probably sold first in the up i don't know about upper mid-level seven figures oh my god no. So no. Yes. Yep. Hundred <laughs> percent. Like you, th- you're saying over a million. Yes. And yes. They're gutting. Gar- almost, almost guaranteed that it did. Oh, not I know. I mean, I know you know yeah. the market, but that and they're right. gonna gut it. They're gutting it, and they're still yeah. only okay. Man, I'm hung up on that, but I'll tell you what. I, it, <laughs> it seems like a hang up to me. Right. Well, yeah. Ugh. This. I mean, and and so this the the story behind the house is you know built in the like 1900s, early 1900. Yeah. Um, the family that lived there has lived there, I think, since like 38. And the the lady of the house just recently passed. And so the house, you know, went up for sale. So the only and... way to get rid of her ghost was to gut it. <laughs> well, yeah, it could, could be. <laughs> I got um, you that one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Old man yeah, so, would have got so, away with it would, if it weren't for you medley you kids. Pesky kids. Yeah. So you, you're you right on the money. 3,200 square feet. I just zillowed this thing. Yeah. 3,200 square feet, four bedroom. I was off on the bedroom count. One must be not legal. Uh, two bath, 1.2 two. million. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Yikes. And yeah, what is the date you're built? Let's see if it says on here. Thanks, California. Anyway. Yeah, right. It doesn't Anybody that knows, knows. If you know, you know. Anyway, yeah. So, I mean, it's a super cool location. It, it's in the university district. I mean, it's a couple blocks from university. So everything in that area gets like a half a million dollar add-on just because. I know what you mean. There's a, yeah, and, I know what you mean. There's yeah, a couple of so. like that here that are, you just, right. you want to live there. You got to eh, pull yeah. out the checkbook. Yep. So anyway, I I don't know what they paid for it, but they got, the, I'm sure it was in that range. They, so we're going to do this gut. 
And so for a, for a week, I'm like, Hey, I need to, I went over, uh, a week ago, basically let's say I went to over eight days previously to do a walkthrough and the builder got hung up. I couldn't meet with him there. I walked through the house. I'm like, all right, well, I think we need to do this, this, that, and the other. We need to cut from here to here. I know that. So I marked out a few places where I, where I knew we needed to cut, but I didn't know where this future bathroom was going to go. Right. Okay. Did, wasn't sure if the laundry was staying in the same place. You know, are we getting two sinks in the one, but the full bath instead of one, there's just, there was like a seven foot vanity in there that had one sink in the corner. You know, it's just, it was <laughs> just a it just, weird layout. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It had like a mid eighties partial remodel on some of it. You know, just oh, perfect. It, it, this is the how type of house that at one point had probably had um, a butler's entry, right? Okay. You know, like it's 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 a kind of a cool old house. Yeah, plaster and, and everything in there. Yep, I'm sure. lots of plaster, lots of asbestos. That's all gone now. Um, it tastes so good though. Yep, it's tasty. Too much cereal. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, coal chute still in the basement. Coal bin still got you know. 10 or 12, you know, wheelbarrow loads of coal in it. And Seriously? Still has yeah. coal in it. Still has coal. So is it a boiler it. or a furnace? Uh, was a furnace. Gravity forced air or gravity hot water. Hot, gravity hot air, yeah. not hot water. Was it a big um, snowman? I don't know what was in there. It's like it's gone. Big... It's been replaced by a forced air unit. Yeah. In the, like, say, in the 80s. Yeah. I would guess there's an old Lennox in there that... Clearly was not original. <laughs> Weighs um, eighteen hundred pounds. Yeah, exactly. Still runs. Yeah. So <laughs> I go over, you know, let's say eight days ago, whatever. I go over, I mark out the floor, I got all these questions, and I'm like, I call Bill here. I'm like, hey, I, I need to know this. I need to know that. Okay, okay, okay. We'll figure that out. We'll figure it out. You know. So end of the week last week, I call him again. I'm like, hey, I still didn't hear from you. Um, I was going to arrange the concrete guy, but now I can't. Cause it's too late, right? Like we're starting on Tuesday. So you guys are going to have to deal with concrete. Okay. You know, uh, I would, you know, just, it needs to be dealt with. I, you know, I was going to call and arrange it, but now it's on you. Um, and we had excluded it, you know, so it was not in our contract, but it was just one of those things that was like, well, I mean, it's for us. I'll call and talk to the concrete guys about what we're going and, you know, get it set up. Well, yesterday ro morning rolls around. And, uh, we show up on, well, the, the, I guess, let me, re let me back up one day from that, the night, the day afternoon before I call the builder and I'm like, Hey, what's, so what's the story on the concrete? Is it already cut? Cause I didn't finish market it out. Cause no, I don't no, know we're going to cut it. Going. Yeah. He's like, I, we're going to cut it tonight and then we'll wrap up in the morning. And I was like, Oh, okay, that's fine. Well, I mean, guess, you know, do you need me to come mark anything out? Oh no, I think we got to figure it out. I'm like, all right, perfect. And so I sh we show up there yesterday morning and they're, you know, the concrete's not cut. And I'm no. like, Why would it come be? on. I got four guys on this job, you know, yeah. for four days. We're going to rough this thing in like and be tested, inspected on Friday. Which you includes know, taking out old plumbing and everything. Like yeah. That. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, and it's going to be like ready to, ready to drywall. And, you know, so I'm kind of, I'm a, a little irritated. And so I'm standing there and, I, and we, and I'm like, yeah, it's not too bad in the, in the basement. He's been cutting since who knows what time, seven or something like that. And he's got this gas powered still saw sitting in the basement and he's got, you know, the doors open and vent, fa you know, fans in the windows and stuff like that. And it's a vacant house, right? There's, it's gutted. And so anyway, he's doing his thing and. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, you could smell it. Somebody had been running a two stroke saw down there, but it wasn't like gassy. Okay. And so we walk upstairs and I'm like, woof, you know, it's all closed up upstairs. So I'm like, all right, well, let's get this place opened up, you know? So we, so I think Miles and I were there. I don't think Rob had gotten there quite yet. And so we started opening the house up and whatever. I mean, the day's going on, right? We're starting to do demo. Um, he's still monkeying around with the saw in the basement and it's pretty quick. It's, it's, it's not 
right. I mean, Miles has got his uh, little personal CO detector on his hip. It things going off. I'm like, we got to get that. We got to. We're out. You know, is the dude stupid. okay downstairs? Well, yeah. So uh, that's the thing. And so we go downstairs, and you know, all three of us have monitors going off, and. Tristan's on his way, right? You know, because he had a service call. And I'm like, this is just stupid. You know, somebody's going to get hurt. I don't even want to be here, you know, <laughs> yeah. for, for 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 various reasons. I mean, the demo's going good. I was super excited about getting started on it. So it wasn't like I didn't want to do the work. And so I go downstairs and the guy's like, yeah, man, I just, I got, it's going to take me a couple hours to cut this concrete. I'm like, well, I know it will because. Yeah, you should have been it there three days ago. Yeah, I mean, or we should have had the concrete company do it. Right. And he's like, well, what's you, your guys' alarms are going off. He goes, what's that mean? I'm like, that it's, you know, there's carbon monoxide in the building. It's yeah, not you good. you should not be breathing this. You shit. shouldn't be here. Yeah. And it's probably way worse where you're at because you're <laughs> standing at the end of the saw. And I'm like, you got to figure out more ventilation and whatever. And so he's like, well, what time are you guys going to break for lunch? And it was like 1130 or something. I'm like, we'll go right now. We're going to take a long lunch. We'll go. We got enough demo done and enough yeah, laid out that we can go sit around a table at, at a restaurant somewhere and scratch out a material list for everything we're going to need. And we'll do that. You know, we'll draw up a little plan and talk about how we're going to. He's going to fall over dead in the basement while you're gone because, you know, he ain't going to. Yeah. And and it, right. And I was like, you you guys got to figure something else out because this isn't working, but we're not staying. Yeah. You know, we'll be back after lunch. And yep. he, there's three or four other carpenters there. There's other people there. And I'm like, but yeah, this is not cool. You know? And so I said, but we're, we're out, you know? And anyway, we do, we go do lunch, probably hour, hour and a half for lunch. Right. You know, just sit around. Yeah. We're kind of BS and went right. to a local, little local taco shop and, Got a soda, and, you know. We did our scratched everything out on a on a notepad and kind of drew up an isometric of you know how we were going to get everything connected. And mm-hmm. we go back to the job, and uh, dude's standing in the driveway, and I'm like, "Are y'all done?" And he's like, "You know, it's kind of." He's like, "I don't feel so good." Chipper, and he's like, "Yeah, I, I didn't get it." I was like, "You okay?" You know, by that no, time I'm like okay. face to face with him, and he's just sheet white, and yeah. I'm like you good? And he's like, no, not really. He goes, I was down there sawing. And then I kind of oh, like dude's got sat CO down poisoning. I've done this. Yeah, I've done this like, myself, I, dude. Yeah. I, he's like, I, 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 I don't even have to hear the rest of the story. <laughs> I know he goes, I'm sawing. And then I just sat down. Yep. Yep. And I just, he goes, I'm, I don't know how long I was sitting there. Nope. And <laughs> then I, I was like, yep. And you wouldn't. Yeah. I said, you are, you were right there at, uh, I'm dead. Yeah. So I've done this. Um, mm-hmm. I've talked about it on the podcast before. I was working on a rough in, upper rough in on a slab on a. It was a warehouse building and was in the office space. So slab, I was doing the upper, steel yep. studs, concrete's poured. On the other side of a temporary wall was a uh, bobcat, a skid yeah. skid loader, grading while they poured concrete mm-hmm. in this massive warehouse, probably. 15,000 square feet or bigger. I don't know. Yeah. When they get that large, it's hard to understand. You know, I don't know how big it was. Yeah. Uh, And it was cold out. So they're running heat to keep the concrete from, you know, flaking. It They can't have the doors open much more than enough to get a chute in for concrete into the buggies. <laughs> they're running a bobcat. Yeah. And they... They don't have any, like, the the temp heat through the, you know, through one of the right. plywood doors is just pushing, you know, CO in there, right? Along oh, with, yeah. the, with the, um, with the uh, skid loader. Yeah. And I got so banged up on this uh, carbon monoxide, just like this guy, where you lose all sense of, like, time. And yeah, it's like slow motion. You're you're high, you're but yeah. not in a recreational <laughs> fun way by any means no, whatsoever. No. no, because the oxygen in your body. So what carbon monoxide does is it 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 surrounds your blood cells and it and it sure. prohibits oxygen from being absorbed into your blood. Yeah, and 
<clears throat> I'm sure a lot of people know this. I'm sure you know this, but like that's what's happened to this dude. He's down there breathing that smoke from the steel saw, and the freaking he's like literally depriving his brain of oxygen. Yeah. yeah, not because it's just hard to breathe in there, but literally right. in at a cellular level. Yeah, yeah. Oh Basically my god. A- Freaking rear naked choke without an arm. <laughs> oh my god, that's so scary! It I, was so well, painful when this happened to me, and it it lasted for months. Right. Well, I'm I'm, and that's why I'm I'm hoping you know he doesn't have any any long term from it. And I don't know my I did I did, I was just like, dude, you, are you good? He's and gonna he's feel like, sick for th- a week or two. I'll guarantee yeah. you. He's like, I think so. I think I'm all right. And I was like, okay, we're done with that, right? We're not doing that anymore. <sighs> He nope, didn't even know what nope. you're talking about I, at the moment. Well, I mean, I think I think we're probably 30 minutes, 20 minutes past. Right. Right. But you know what I mean? Like he didn't even yeah. like even the conversation was kind of beyond could could have been comprehensive. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So anyway, I'm just like it, it just got me thinking, you know. So yesterday afternoon, you know, came the the group text from me. Guys, you know, thinking a lot about this. What are we missing for job site safety stuff? Like what what's on, what's not on your van? What do you, is there anything that you on the day to day go? I don't, you know, I should probably have that. You know, do yeah. you need more earplugs? Do you need more safety glasses? Do you need, you know, over the ear pro- protection? What I mean, what do you, what do you have on your van? What I mean, what are you know, what are you missing? You know, and I, I'm I was happy. I was super ecstatic that. My crew showed up on the job with our CO detectors on, just like we do. And like you're wearing you know, them, or they're on your bags. Yeah. Well, a, a lot of times, I'll 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 recommend that. Yeah. You know, if you're walking around a house, you're not carrying your tool bag around the house. Yeah. You might be grabbing a couple of tools and heading up to the bathroom. You know. Yeah. Mine's always on my bag, but yeah, that's a bedroom. Yeah. A, but I but in that in mine and that's where mine was at. Was sitting on my bag, but guess what? I didn't bring my bag into the job, right? You know, so I didn't have mine, and I and I and it just it was like God. Okay, that could have been well. Weird normally, if I yeah, was the only but one see, here. normally nobody's cutting concrete with a freaking uh, gas saw because you're not working house, on jobs yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yep. Yeah. But it but it went it went back out to the fact that when we posted that CO detector. Two years ago, whatever it was. Yeah, the Honeywell. It it got a lot of buzz from a lot of people. And I'm not going to, I'm 100% not the first person to ever do that, right? Like I'm, they, no. they make this thing and they have for years. Citron has them too now. I think it's actually the same yeah. sensor too. Um, Could be. It's a great little personal, you know, PPE. Uh, yeah. If you if you're working around gas equipment, you work around appliances, uh, oil. Yeah. If you're uh, an equipment operator. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just, just like you said, I mean, how many times have you been in a, in a job site where they've got a little mini oh, in the tented, God. underneath the tented brick, right. you know, the brick shelter because right. they're digging in the utilities or something, you know? Yeah. If you're around, uh, diesel temporary and, heat and gas yeah. equipment, saws, diggers, you name it. Yeah. Uh, trowels, power trowels, stuff yeah, like that. Trowels. Those are yeah. almost Jumping always. Jack. Combusted combustion yep, engines, or right? Yeah, and um, so if they're indoors and you're even just adjacent, like I was in a separate part of the building, you would yeah. think that in the part of the building I was in had a heating system operational, right? Yeah, uh, just a rooftop unit, duct work. I was water piping. I was waste and vent in the walls, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So, and separated by a, 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 maybe it was temp, maybe it was a standard wall. I don't remember. But anyway, uh, yeah. if you're working around that, these personal CO monitors are an absolute must, in my opinion. Yeah. Because that I, carbon I monoxide, it'll literally, it'll kill you. And the problem is, is when <laughs> right. you get the poison, you get to the point in which you're poisoned by it yeah. or on the brink of it, you start to lose. The, the reason why people die is because it takes over and you pass out. Yep. I don't care how strong well, that's what he said. He you sat down or whatever, you know? Yeah. He sat down because not because he was tired. He sat down because he physically probably couldn't stand any longer. Yeah. Well, that that's the thing too. A lot of people, like a, a lot of young guys might, if they took the time to listen to what we're talking about and they start thinking about it, some of them might go the route of like, I'm fit. I'm super, you know, yeah. uh, 
I'm strong, I'm I'm agile, all these things, right? Athletic, yeah. whatever I'm trying to say. You know, I'm carbon saying. monoxide don't care. <laughs> it doesn't care. And and by the way, the more physical you are, the kind of yeah. work you're doing, the higher likelihood that this is going to affect you in a sooner yeah. and in a in a um in a uh, more dangerous way. Does that make sense? Like yeah. Because you're going to be, the more physical the work, the more you're huffing and puffing yeah. and, and taking in a lot of uh, of the CO. So anyway, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm no doctor, but it's this is obvious stuff if you've ever yeah. dealt with it. So I like I said, I don't know. I, I just, it just brought, it just kind of hit home that, you know, like, hey, we need to talk about safety more often. You, you should, know, dude. There's sucks. so much nobody, effort, and you guys Nobody wants to. No, nobody <laughs> wants to, but you're, well, first of all, you guys are union. You have access to a lot yeah. of great information that's already just out there for you. So you probably oh, yeah. could get your hands on some uh toolbox talk kind of stuff. Yeah. You guys well meet once a week. Why don't you just take 10 minutes to do it? Yeah. And that and that's that's kind of that's kind of the direction we're uh, I guess I'm looking at is um it came up on another project, one of the other new builds we're doing. Um we got our signed contract back from the the builder and right on there is, you know, hey, on our job site, there's no smoking, there's no, you know, alcohol use, there's none of this, none of that, you know, the standards. And then there's, um, you must follow your company's safety procedure and you must, you know, have a signed safety policy from each of your employees. <laughs> and and I'm like, like, oh, I suppose I have to make one of those for them to sign it. I got to figure that out. You know how I made, <laughs> you know how I figured out my safety policy? I do. I'm going to, I'm going to guess. Guess. It's called Chat GPT. Yes, it did. Did ding ding ding. <laughs> or maybe I, Gemini. I, I don't know. You you yeah. like the Google stuff. So yeah, I mean Cheryl and I were reading through this contract the other day and I'm like, huh, we need a safety policy. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, I, I mean, we should have had one for a long time, you know. Well, I yeah. mean uh, yeah. no reason why we shouldn't. And it wasn't that I put it off for any any good reason other than we just didn't do it. Yeah. You know, and it, and it, nobody has has said you need this. Well, I know. Well, I know your that safety I need policy this. up till now was, oh, is that blade moving? Don't you stick your finger in it, okay? Yeah, right. Like that was right. the safety policy. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, so I'm like, we're in the office, and I was like, I got, I don't have time for this. Yeah. I don't have time to you know figure this out. I gotta, I but I need it needs to be a priority. So I thought I'm gonna just get Chat GPT started on it. And I'll go about doing my other thing and then I'll come back in three seconds and look and see what it came up with. And you're like, right. So I typed in, I'm like, make me a, you know, safety policy for Mickelson plumbing and heating, you know, formal length, you know, something that my employees can review and sign. But enter close, (laughs) just went, literally went away from the window, went back to finishing the quote that I was working on or the billing or whatever I was doing. And, you know, three, four minutes later, I'm done with the other task. Yeah. And I open that thing back up and here's seven and a half pages. Nice. Formatted, ready to go. And I'm like reading through this thing and I'm like, that is it. It's spot on. Like every safety policy should read. Oh, wow. That's crazy. And I'm like, Perfect. It says enter name, company name here, enter, you know, employee signature box. It's got a place to sign everything. I mean, it's there, there's, there's a little bit of stuff in there that you can tell is like, that doesn't Chat really GPT. make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we cleaned up a couple of things. I'm going to hand it out to the guys uh, tomorrow and say, Hey, will you take a look at this, read it, let me know what a, what it's missing or what you go, this is stupid. You know, because I, w- I don't want this to be a like, oh, here's a new rule. Arr, well, you know, but there's it's, nothing wrong but with it's, having rules and eventually they're going to be no. there. So, yep. yeah. So anyway. Well, well, that's... <laughs> so you talk about the van and stuff and driving is what comes up in my head when you brought that up. And I was just yeah. driving oh, across the friggin whole metro yesterday. I was all over the place. Um, busy, busy, which is nice because it hasn't been busy. And it all started with a, I got a call from a customer with one of those CU3A boilers and he's got a leak on an expansion tank. Imagine that. And, um, you heard my rants on those a million times already. I think I sent you a video, (laughs) but anyway, um, I got to stop at Johnstone on the way, but that's in St. Paul and I'm, you know, I'm 
weaving in and out of freaking construction and my phone's ringing and the whole time I'm just becoming like overwhelmed with uh some calls are piling on and stuff like that right and yeah. nothing you nothing you haven't lived through in the past but you brought up safety and then you said the van is there anything you need on the van that kind of thing and here I am thinking as we're talking like just distractions overall yeah like I need to really reevaluate as I'm uh, for like phone calls and stuff like that. You're lucky you do have somebody in the op- you know, you have Cheryl in the office. Mm-hmm. But like the amount of distraction that you invite in, more or less by necessity, because your owner operator yep. while you're driving around town is crazy. I mean, right yeah. now, the Twin Cities metro area and outlying suburbs, like, there, I can't think of a place that isn't under construction right now, like major <laughs> right. arteries. Like when you were with me, I'm driving down. Cons- it, you, well, I just hit road, like roads closed. I'm like, are you freaking yeah. kidding me? It's the only road and it's closed. Yeah. Like, how do I, yeah, you know, we, we just drove 12 minutes this direction. I know because it was going to save closed. me time. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then yeah. it didn't, you know, uh, yeah. But it's those kinds of things that I think are often overlooked while you're on your AirPods and you're, you know, give me a break. I do not touch my phone while I'm driving, but I will tell you what, I, I tend to click a calendar open or real quick while I'm driving. I'm not, I'm, I'd be an idiot to think you would believe me if I said I didn't put it that way. Yep. I'd be an idiot to say that I didn't. Yeah. Well, exactly. And so, uh, I'm not proud of that. I do try to stop. I honestly do. I do try to push things off. Like, look, I'm driving right now. Let me get back to you in 10 minutes. Cause people yeah. will wait for stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but just sometimes taking the call alone is enough to distract you depending on what's on your mind or the things you're, you're talking about. Well, and, and so here's the, here's the thing that, that, we, that I've found with it is either a, you're going to distract yourself from driving or B you're not paying attention to the conversation Yeah, and you're going to miss an important detail with a client. And I, well, so regularly we'll be like, give me 30 seconds. I'm going to pull into this church parking lot and then we're going to talk while I'm not driving. And it sucks because you can do that three, four, five times in a trip. Yeah. You know, if, if the phone's busy and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I was going to drive. I went, ran to this rent for parts. I'll be back in 30 minutes in an hour and 20. You're like, oh, I'm not even worried job. about that. Here's why. If I, this is getting kind of going down the wrong road yeah. about this conversation, but it comes down to organization and your brain and all those kinds of yeah. things, right? If I don't write things down, and I, when I say write things down, I'm typing them into my phone on like a note or something like that. Right. Uh, if I don't do that, um, because I didn't pull over and take the time to do it, then yeah. um, I may as well crash on the side of the road because I'm going to forget it. I'm going to be distracted and it won't get done. And that's kind of a blanket statement for like, I'll forget. I talked to the person I, you know, like I just, that's the way my brain is. I can't, I have 13 things I'm already thinking about. And this rando convo came in. Like I'm not, I, at least I know enough to know that I, I'm not good enough at remembering that kind of stuff. Um, reliably. I will remember it as I'm driving to the job tomorrow and I go, Oh, that's right. I was supposed to call the dude. I'm supposed to be yeah. there in two hours or the classic, you get the text from the customer. Hey, what time were you planning to come today? And you talk to him like it's Monday and you talk to him Friday and you, you know, you never wrote it down, you know? Yeah. That kind of thing. So yeah, it it is tied to safety. Like you say, you know, take 30 seconds and pull over. And then yeah. like, then there's that other side of it. Like I said, kind of going down the wrong road with this combo, but like, I won't remember. So I do have to, like, it's twofold for me. I got to do it for safety yeah. purposes, but also if I don't write it down, take the time to be safe and do it properly, then I'm going to forget. The other yeah. thing too is driving around, uh, any, all the service contractors out there listening know what I'm going to say or know what I'm saying when I say you see everything. You're sitting up high in these vans. And you yeah. have a different vantage point. You're like kind of like the truckers out there. They see everybody because they're up high and you can right. see everybody's on their phone. I don't care if you think you're safe. You're not. 
You're def you're, you're not. not. And no. be real with yourself too, by the way. I'm going to kind of admonish anybody that does this because it drives me freaking nuts. I used to do it. I used yeah. to text. I used to look at my phone while I'm driving years and years ago. Yeah. They finally made it a law here and I'm just scared enough of the government that I followed the law. And thankfully right. so, now I advocate for it. If you're touching your phone, like if you're looking at your phone and, and you're Snapchatting, Instagram, yeah. whatever it is, you're like, you are an idiot. You're a total yeah. moron. I see it all day long. And I said, yeah. yes, I touched my phone. Look, I am an idiot too. But there are people yeah. that, look, that's how they drive. Yeah. I I would say that, you know, the, the one of the bigger, uh, biggest difference between, and not and not that I'm like saying, oh, it's okay. Um, but one of the, the large differences is that you and I, f- for sure, because I've, I've ridden in your van, you've ridden in mine. We both have a phone mount, something that's there. I'm not holding my phone in front of the steering wheel. Yeah, no. Trying to do this, you know, it's yeah. it's at a at a location where it doesn't make it okay to be it on. Doesn't it. Right. right. But it's it, it the the very very or the difference between that and somebody sitting there propping the phone up on the steering wheel oh. while they're driving with a knee. I, it's constant, I, dude. Cheryl gets after me all the time because I'm driving around in a van that's got my phone number and our business name on the side of it. I'll honk at people and like freaking it just it yeah. drives and, and and I shouldn't. No, because but, I'm not the I'm not the police, but there's right. times when you know you're sitting in traffic or whatever and there's somebody you can tell that they're they're looking down, right? Like Oh my god, just constantly. A very, it doesn't very, matter what age they are either. In fact, I see it in uh people older that are appear to be older than me. Yeah. Uh, I see that constantly. And it it seems as if it's even more and more and more like, yeah. How is it that people in 2024 have, (laughs) have, are still under the mindset? Like it's like, you, you can't go with the drive, the distance of the drive without looking like, I know it's an addiction. Like get it under control. Friggin Kevin. You know what I mean? Like, what the hell, dude? Like, I don't know. Sorry. It, I'm not sorry, sorry but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, I see it all the time. You talk about safety. There's plenty yeah. of things that we could all do better. And there's plenty of policies and stuff you can put in place. There's tools, there's, yeah. there's PPE, there's all that. But like just the distraction too. like, you yeah. gotta get this under control people. Like seriously, well, no, just a big rant on a totally kind of different subject, but yeah, but but it's on the same subject. I mean, it was part of what what wanted me to talk about this ep- or this topic today. You know, the safety in the job, safety in the van. You know, just being aware of your surroundings, right? Yeah, like you know, we we had the the I guess the mindset to come in to the job site with say, with sensor with our CO detectors and our safety equipment and. All of that, you know, as I was walking around through the job site yesterday, we're doing demo. All my guys are wearing safety glasses. They got all got ear pro on. They got gloves on. You know, we're doing the right thing, you know, cutting this cast out and cutting the galvy out. And, you know, I was just like, yeah, you know, we're these these guys are pros. You know, this is this is what we do. And and so I was I was proud to see that. Um, you know, not that anybody else on the job was taking safety lightly, because everybody had you know, if they were cutting plaster, it was, you know, he had a respirator on, Yeah. you know, doing, doing that kind of thing. And the guy running the saw was the same way. You know, he had a, uh, 3M respirator on too and ear pro and goggles and, you know, glasses and, you know, but you know what, the respirator doesn't filter CO. It doesn't make oxygen in the air. And they I, do, and I think yeah. that was, that's one of those places where, that respirator makes you feel a false sense of security. Well, because you don't understand what it's for. Yeah. The um, the let me ask you. That was yesterday, as we're recording yeah. right now. That was literally yeah. yesterday. That dude is going to be so hungover today. I I wouldn't be surprised he if, he went, the in, if he didn't go into urgent care or or the ER. Yeah. Yep. I, I hope, hope he didn't have. He's to. doing all right, but yeah. Uh it. Yep. It's painful, man. If you've never been through it, and if you're listening, yeah. if you've never been through that, is super, super, super dangerous. Yeah, but well, it I, doesn't clear out just going out in the air. No, no, out in the outside. It takes, no, it takes t- like days. I said, I dealt with it for like a couple yeah. months, and for the first 
solid seven to ten days, I felt like I was hung over. Yeah. And uh and like the headaches and the body mm-hmm. aches and oh my God. Seriously. Yeah. It's Seriously. so painful. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's let's I'm wrap bring, it. I, I want to bring up one quick topic yeah. on fan safety and paying attention. Okay. Um, I think probably a large number of people follow HVAC reefer guy. Oh yeah. Um, pretty, pretty well known in the IG, uh, community. Um, he's got a post out there when this comes out, it'll be about a month ago. Mike, right? what's Mike's last name? Why can't Mike. I think of the last name? Uh, I don't, I, I can't it. either right off the top of my head. Okay. But Mike, HVAC um, anyway, reefer guy. Mike posted something about, I think it's in Arizona, um, about a uh, service van basically all smashed up at a train crossing. Oh, boy. Pay attention. Jesus. Train crossings are one of those things that we bounce across every single day, yeah. right? Most of, Almost every person in the this entire North America crosses a railroad crossing at some point during the day, right? I do multiple times, yeah. If, if I don't care if that thing's got crossing arms or not. If your they mind doesn't look both directions on the track you're you're uh, you're taking everything you're relying on a piece of safety equipment you know it's just yeah it's not it's very basically it's a switch down right. down the tracks that has to be you yeah. know what if it I, I know this i've i my entire life since a young boy right was was impacted or changed by a railroad crossing yeah and the safety devices at that railroad crossing not doing what they were supposed to. Right. Right. Um, uh, it resulted in an accident that was involved my, my father in a fire truck. Yep. Um, and you know what? It, it, it just, you pay attention, you know? And I'm, yeah. and I'm, uh, Absolutely. his, he, my dad's accident was not that. That was a, it was a whole different scenario, but it was somebody altered with the way that the safety devices and the warning devices work. Oh, and yikes. therefore in the middle of the night doesn't with a train that has the headlights off, you don't see that. No. So they, they're kind of dangerous. Yeah. So anyway, pay attention when you're crossing the tracks, look I, both ways. Absolutely. All right, dude. It's easy. Hey everybody. Uh, email us your ideas, DM us over on Instagram. You can do all that very quickly. You can even send us a text message. Uh, we try to make it as easy as possible. Open up your, your podcast app that you're listening to us on. Uh, if you're on YouTube, do it right in the comments. But uh, just send us a message. Tell us what you yep. like, you dislike, what you want to hear about. I really do appreciate your feedback. Uh, if you can, give us a rating. We haven't uh, asked for that for a while. But on the podcast oh. apps, uh, we rely on those ratings for people to help find us or listen to us or whatever. Yep. If you find this at all interesting or entertaining or totally outrageous tell all your friends about it <laughs> yep on a on a quick side note there um for the uh, co detectors that eric and i are using um there will be a link in the show notes okay um, you got to remind me though yep. or, or you got to put it in there. right there all right. i already put the link in the notes nice all right dude see you see you